We're now going to see what kind of creatures live in the estuaries, and we have students again who will show some of the things that they were collecting earlier this morning. As you can see, our background is the Charlotte Harbor. A few moments ago, our crew went to Charlotte Harbor and they collected some pretty neat creatures. I'm talking about some egg masks that we found. When this matures, we, there is no deter we ha cannot determine what this is going to be, but it might be over a thousand different marine organisms. It's very slimy and runny. As I tip my hand, you can see it runs. And we, like I said, we cannot determine what this is. Dana, what do you have? Here I have what is called a crown conch. This is called a crown conch. This is the body of the animal. And whenever I move my finger, it will try and to contract itself into its shell and it can go completely in and cover itself with this hard mass which is called the foot. The foot is also used to arm the animal from any animals that try to eat it or harm it in any way. It gets its name from the points at the top of the shell which resemble a crown. As you can see here it has a various coloration but yet on the other side, it is covered with algae. It is cleaner on this side than the other side because when the animal comes out, it will clean the shell. The shell is called a univalve, meaning that it is one shell in a continuous shape. Unlike this, which is a bivalve, meaning you can split it apart and it is two. If this organism were to die or be killed, it, the shell will be completely empty, and if we put it back in the harbor, there is a chance that there might be another animal that will come and move into it as the hermit crab. What do you have, Heather? I have what do we call a mango tree crab. Um, this is about a full size. Maybe it'll get a little bigger. It's not the ones we eat, like the blue crab or a snow crab. Um, this one thing unique about it is that it does climb actually in the mangrove trees. Um, when the trees start to shed their leaves, as we heard earlier, we, um, they start to decay and then that actually provides food for the other organisms. What fish do you have, Mr. Nesta? Well, over here we've got a, a fish that's often used as a bait fish and uh, he's trying to get away from me right now. You know, these fish are kind of, kind of fast and stuff. There we go. We've got the fish. We've got a, a horseshoe crab. We've got a conch. But the one we're talking about is this big, regular-looking fish right there. It's known as a pinfish. And you notice that he doesn't like being caught like this because lots of times when that happens, he ends up becoming uh, food for some other fish. Now, one of our other teachers in the marine science program is Claire, and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about how the Peace River affects the estuary. We live in Hardy County and the Peace River flows through Hardy County and what's interesting is that people even 130 miles away from the estuary system can totally affect this estuary system. So it's important to be mindful of the rivers and things around you in order to keep this estuary system clean.